say is this is the first election uh where there has been this this election has had the mo the most transparency of any election in uh, American history I would say because I of agree. the proliferation of social media because of the ability of hackers to hack into like once private databases and release information to the public we have never seen an election like this before but I think this we need to be expected we need to be expecting this kind of dynamic to be what elections are like from now on and mm -hmm. Hillary Clinton is playing in it's playing an old game in a new world. They're un they, they were unprepared for the realities of the internet age with this electoral cycle. And hopefully this is going to be a harsh, you know, a harsh wake up for the Democratic Party that you can't hide anymore. You can't control the narrative the way you used to control. You can't throw it. Correct the record. Right. The record. The, we have archives now. We have like art undeletable archives you can't redact everything anymore this is now <laughs> we now live in a world where the internet has made it really really hard to be you corrupt can't delete you know, thousands person. of tweets you mean you can't just just clear yeah. your twitter page and pretend like you just started twitter okay. and those and those things that you said in 1994 or 1996 they come back to haunt you because you can just look it up and mm -hmm. here's the difference between the millennial generation and the generation before the after you know i guess the well generation x or anyone who came who came before the millennials uh we look things up we Google things you tell us almost immediately. You can know you're, this, there's no longer this kind of tacit acceptance of whatever you tell us as being the fact. We are just inherently distrustful mm -hmm. of the government and the electoral process in a way that generations before us, you and Noah, but the first election I can remember was the election of George W. Bush. Uh, mm -hmm. That was the first election that I was paying attention to because at the time I was nine years old and all I heard what cemented my opinion of American democracy was that he cheated and he won despite losing the popular vote. And then I watched for eight years as that problem was never corrected. And yep. then I watched for another eight years as that problem was still never corrected. So I would you know, make the argument that the millennials have an inherent distrust of the, of the system that has never been corrected uh, because the problem was never solved. I agree and with you. My, my first my first election was 2000. Um, voting. I mean, I remember. I, I mean, I will say the first election that I remember remember was probably probably still around like nine, ten years old, and that would have been a, a Clinton election. That would have been Clinton's first election, and Ross Perot. And because I remember I had a friend who was voting for Ross Ross Perot in our in our election at school, and she tried to get me to vote for him too. And you know, being a, a, a ten year old and not wanting to vote for Clinton because. I come from a black nationalist household, so my family wasn't even supporting him. I voted for Ross Perot too at ten. Uh, what did I know? I, he he was funny looking. Got to got to got to represent for the different people. Um, but no, seriously. But my first, my, I, I first voted as a college student on campus at Ohio State uh, for uh, uh, Gore because we couldn't let George W get in office. We, we couldn't do it. I voted in Ohio. Um, it was a big deal. And I believed, I just believed so much. And we were so crushed. In 2004, I was just actually, because again, like I said, I took my daughter to vote with me. Um, and my daughter will be able to vote for the first time in the 2020 election. But she went to vote with me. My kids usually go to vote with me. Um, and in 2004, I had my son on my hip and I had my daughter sitting on the floor coloring. And we were still in Ohio and voted for John Kerry that time, because we we couldn't, we had to get rid of George Bush, and Ohio was 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 the problematic state that year. Florida was in 2000, Ohio was 2004, and yeah, we were in those long lines. I sat in a long line with with babies on my feet. But what was what what stands out in my memory more than standing in line to vote against George Bush in 2004, and we see how this strategy did not work. Right, this voting against the candidate does not work. It does not work for Democrats. It doesn't work at all. But we, but 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 what stands out more to me was the fact that in 2004, that election in Ohio was when they put the amendment defining marriage between a man and a woman and got rid of civil unions and domestic partnerships. And standing in line, having been in a domestic partnership with the father of my children, I mean that's how at when we were having our daughter, that's how I had ins health insurance because we were domestic partners, and 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 just the the way they were able to scare people into 
and, and, and prey on the homophobia of people in 2004. And we saw laws like this popping up after that, that whole time. Um, getting rid of those things, state and local elections absolutely matter. They, they, they directly impact our lives and standing there talking to people in line and people weren't even thinking about the fact that, you know, uncle and auntie so-and-so who've been together 25 years in their common law civil union or whatever, that don't count no more because you're voting against it. 